please welcome the host of Security Sidebar, John Wagnon. Well, hello there, Dev Central. I'm John, and this is the Security Sidebar live stream. And I'm excited to be here today. This is going to be an awesome show. Uh, we're going to dive deeper into the dark web. If you remember from last time, we had the uh, Security Sidebar. We talked to uh, security expert extraordinaire, John Cianfarani. We talked about, you know, what is the dark web? Why do people go there? Uh, you know, what happens there? Just all that kind of stuff. It was an amazing conversation. And um, and we have John back today. So it's going to be a great show. And we're, we're going to dive deeper into the dark web. So today's going to focus uh, not necessarily on what is the dark web. If, if you didn't catch last time, you can go back and watch it. Uh, but today we're going to look at like some of the tools that are used and some of the activities that people, you know, try to accomplish on the dark web. So, you know, if you try to if you try to like, you know, credential stuff someone with a bunch of stolen credit cards or something like that, then how do you do that? Like what tool would you use to even attempt that kind of activity? Right. And so we're going to uh, we're going to dig into all that stuff. Uh, before before we uh, bring Mr. John on, so today's going to be a bunch of Johns, right? John and John. Uh, I wanted to mention a few shows that are upcoming. On Thursday, we've got the OWASP Top 10. There's a brand new OWASP Top 10 that just got released. So we're going to have St Sam Stepanian on, and that's going to be an awesome conversation all about the new OWASP Top 10. And then after that, Jason Rahm is going to uh, be joined by Kevin Stewart, and they're going to talk about all the proxies. Man, there are so many proxies out there. It's I saw the list that Jason's going to go over. There's an amazing number of proxies. It's it's awesome. So they're going to talk about all that stuff. Kevin Stewart, a Dev Central hero, a legend. Uh, Kevin Stewart. So make sure you join in on that. And then after that, David Warburton is going to uh, join us to talk about the TLS report, the 2021 TLS report out of F5 Labs. It's going to be an amazing show as well. And then to round out November, we're going to talk about F5 technology that we're thankful for because we got Thanksgiving coming up here in America, and uh, and so we're going to uh, we're going to enjoy that. All right. Well, so today, like I said, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about you know deeper into the dark web, diving deeper into the dark web. So with that, let me uh, let me introduce the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, Mr. John Cianfarani out of Shape Security. So here we go. And there he is. We think, we think we know who that is. We think we know who that is. Oh, hey, it's John. John. <laughs> it's John. I did, yeah. Hey, I didn't know who, I didn't know who it was there for a second. Welcome, well, John. It's great to have uh, you, my friend. On the internet, we're all anonymous, right? Always. Always. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what I saw on the I saw that uh, Guy Fox Day uh, over in London or England or whatever was like like four days ago. This there was this big I mean, you can look up the history of what happened with this whole, you know, powder plot, you know, thing, whatever. But uh, it was like four days ago. Remember, like remember the 5th of November? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's Everyone time to go back and watch uh, good old V for Vendetta. That's it, man. That's it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, man, well, hey, thanks for coming back on. Last time was an awesome conversation. And uh, so, yeah, man, it's uh, it's an honor to have you back. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I did want to uh, I did want to say hi to Aditya out there. Aditya says, hi, John. Happy to see you again. Aditya, I'm not sure which John you're talking about, but we'll just <laughs> assume you're talking to both of us. So it's good to see you out there, my friend. That's awesome, man. Um, awesome stuff. Well, hey, man. So, John, last time we talked about what is the dark web, you know, all that stuff, like I mentioned a few a few minutes ago. But today we wanted to hop into like some of the tools that people use and some of the ways that they accomplish what they accomplish. Um, and so if it's cool, you know, we'll hop right into this thing. And one Absolutely. of the first things that we wanted to talk about was if I'm if I'm just a normal person sitting at my house or my whatever and I want to get like into the dark web, I want to kind of explore the space. Right. Then. How would I go about doing that? And so I was going to pop up a quick slide right here and maybe have you talk us through, you know, some of the steps because you don't, you probably shouldn't just grab your little, you know, your work laptop and just try to hop into some of these places. There's a few little steps, right? So let me, let me pop this up. If you don't mind, maybe walk us through, you know, some steps to, to access this place. Exactly. So, I mean, I guess as we, as we start out here, you're going to want a, a hoodie and a matrix background and, you know, of course, think, uh, Maybe it's not optional anymore to have our good old Guy Fox mask. You got to have um, it. And but I think the you know the 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 concern you have is 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 valid. I think you know if you're just starting out and you don't really know where you're going and you're trying to go to some of these sketchy sites and maybe follow so, along with some of the things that we're doing here or go you know diving deep yourself. Um, 
you you want to you know reduce the exposure overall. You try not to use your corporate systems. Try not to use your personal systems. So the way I would you know recommend it is is have this layer of abstraction. A virtualized system is what I use. You know, and I'll I'll show that off as we start going down the the road. There's something like a virtual box or ESXi or VMware Workstation where you can have like a Windows or a Linux instance dedicated for this type of behavior because. If anything ever goes wrong and you're like, I think I clicked the wrong link or I downloaded the software, but maybe it did something weird to my PC. You know, the last thing you want to worry that it's your corporate information or your personal information that somehow is getting compromised. So, you know, under that scenario, you know, a virtual machine gets compromised. You know, you just you shoot it, you, you start up a new one and, right. and you're, you're, you're good to go. Um, the next of layers is sort of that, that networking layer again as best as you can to try and, you know, limit your exposure. So whether that's using uh, VPNs to, you know, log yourself into somewhere else, uh, like another another location to try and protect your local network. Um, or, you know, if you're more, more, more na- network savvy and you're able to segment that, that say that VM outside of your, your current LAN, all of those things are, are, you know, better recommended. And then lastly, just around the browser itself. So, you know, in some cases, if you're going to links that we talked about before, like on on the, the Onion Network on Tor, you'll need a Tor browser to connect to them. Um, otherwise, you may want to be a little bit more careful having uh, plugins like NoScript installed on a, you know, on a regular Chrome browser, uh, and just to limit some of the JS that may be running on those sites. Yeah. So I guess, I guess the bottom line, number one, that's all, those are awesome recommendations. Uh, and so it's just good to keep in mind that the, the user that might want to step into this world of the dark web, uh, just know that you're entering kind of, uh, you know, the danger zone, as it were. The danger zone in that there's a lot of like nefarious activity. There's criminal activity and all that that goes on. And so, yeah, when you click on a link, then who knows what you might be downloading. <laughs> exactly. So, in- we're truly in an yeah. area of uh, there's no honor amongst thieves here. No, so no, the thieves try and steal from the thieves. So you don't want to yes. get caught up in, in, in that. That's right. So that's why, you know, when you do all these things that you just mentioned there that are listed here on the slide, that's why, you know, those are just levels of protection for yourself, uh, just like you mentioned. So that's uh, those are those are really good steps to take before you enter into the craziness of the of the dark web right so some of these sites that we're gonna we're gonna show you you need to have this protection in place beforehand all right well let me take that down and then uh, if it's cool uh john we'll go ahead and uh screen share for you and you yep. can show us um you know some of the some of these sites but one of the tools actually to kind of set this up a little bit one of the tools that you mentioned um is a tool called Open Bullet, and maybe before we get there, actually, let me back up a quick second. You can show us maybe even your like ESXi and some of the virtualized yep. stuff that you've got, uh, but then we'll get into this tool called Open Bullet, and it'd be awesome to see like what that does and what you know when these when these uh, you know users or attackers or whatever are trying to do what they do on the dark web. You know what does this tool do? So let me uh, let me let me pop your screen up here, and you can kind of walk us through. Uh, this is the virtualized uh, part, right, for your setup. Sure. So this, yeah, exactly. This is my ESXi at home, just an old server that uh, that I had. So I've got, uh, you know, just a Windows 10 instance here that I'm using. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm never worried that, again, if it ever gets compromised, um, uh, I, I can just blow it away and create a new one. So there, there's nothing nothing lost. And for me, that's that's an easy scenario. So I'm going to jump in here to the, a remote console into this Windows 10 instance. Okay. And what I've got open here is... Open Bullet. So it, it's, it's essentially a, an open framework that you can build um, and and say, I'll say lightly code uh, to perform actions on your behalf. So many times this is used for things like credential stuffing, uh, which essentially taking usernames and passwords and, and throwing them at the wall against a website and seeing if any of those work. Uh, but there's nothing that stops it from being used, for example, checking gift cards, checking credit cards, uh, trying to buy things online. You know, there, there's a whole bunch of automations essentially you can do with it. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll jump right in um, through many of those sections. So okay. I would say the first piece is really the configuration. So what we're going to do today, uh, there's a site and it's called hackthissite.org. Uh, um, so we're, we're going to be gentle. We're not really going to go all out but we're going to use it as our demonstration and jumping off point. So uh, I've taken the liberty of building a few things ahead of time. So there's yeah. two typical ways that we see that that uh, that uh, attackers would, uh, would try and credential stuff a site. So if we jump right in, the first way is just a post method in that they don't really want to run a full browser, cost more memory, harder to do, you know, something very light 
uh, if the website has no protections in place, it's it's the best way, and they can do you know tens of thousands of checks per second, if, depending on the hardware and stuff they have. Okay. So essentially, the way this is done, uh, you've got this config, and you've got different building blocks that you can add. And as you add each one of these building blocks, you can go in and configure them separately. So if we take a look at this one, the first building block that I have here is essentially a GET request. So I've got the URL that I want to go to, hack this site, the method is mm -hmm. GET, and everything mm -hmm. else is generally in here is pretty standard. Some, mm -hmm. some headers if I wanted to customize them. Okay. The next part that I have here, um, and these are really more for show because they're not necessarily needed here, uh, but if I needed to pull out things like uh, cookies, where if the website is sending me a cookie or they're hiding some sort of value, a session ID somewhere in there, I might need that as a part mm -hmm. of the, my post to sending back uh, along with the username and password. So in yep. this case, uh, and, and I'm gonna, just going to do a, uh, uh, there's an option here, SBS, called step-by-step, -step, so I can walk through through these things. So the first step mm -hmm. here being get. So essentially what it, what it does is it goes out and it, it gets this website. Uh, okay. We can see that it's executing, sends all the headers, it receives all the headers, it received uh, received this cookie, hacked this site, and it's got a value, and it received all the HTML part of the site. Okay. So the next part here, uh, hack this part here, parse cookies. What it's doing is it's specifically looking for this cookie, uh, and what it'll do is it'll take the cookie value and stick it in this variable called cookie token. So if I mm -hmm. step forward, what we can see is that it parsed the value, it found the value that we indicated, stuck it into cookie token. Okay. Um, there was another value in the body that I decided to pull out as well, just as a showcase, so in case there was something there. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece we have here, or the second last piece, is essentially the post itself. So again, I'm posting back to this, this site. The post data is the username and password, uh, and there's some variables, username and password, which are coming from right now just in this debugging mode uh, up here. Uh, and then we can see the custom cookie that I'm sending back, and I use the variable cookie token, custom headers, and essentially, okay. as I do that, now what it it does is it actually just builds this post request based on all the data I needed and mm -hmm. submits it. And we can, if I take a look at the HTML view, it shows me that, oh, look at that. You know, a username one at two.com, you know, does not exist. Uh, okay. The last piece that I've got here is a key check. Uh, so I'm going to be looking, for example, for certain things uh, for the code to be able to say, hey, was this was this account successful? So in this case, I've got things like invalid password or does not exist. So it looks through the source and says, oh, okay, if it, if, if you see the words does, does not exist, well, consider this a failure. Mm -hmm. I can add in more things that would do uh, do more to be successful, to add successful criteria to then start pulling out data. But again, this is really just a, a base level to sort of show you, show people what's possible. So through that, at the end of it, it, it looked at it and says, well, you know, it contains the words does not exist. And so mm -hmm. we're going to end up failing. So that's that's okay. a simple scenario. And now we'll take it to the next one where it's maybe a little bit more complicated where you actually need to run a browser. But ultimately, it's still generally pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So our first action here is to just open a browser. In this case, it's going to be Chrome. And we're going to tell it, OK, same thing as the other one. Go to this site. We give it a small timeout just so that we can wait for the browser to actually render and load the site. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now this is where we you got to jump a little bit deeper in. But based on the way the site is built, we can look for elements. So we're, in here, we're looking for an element that is named username. And we're going to send this action, say, send keys human. So essentially, it tries to make them look like a human interaction. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to do the same thing for the password. Uh, and then we're going to submit that. And then lastly, we've got the same thing, a check. So if we if we now, I'm not going to run step by step because we, we sort of generally, I, I think, mm -hmm. understand what's happening. Sure. So if I run that, we can see that my Chrome browser opens up. It goes to that site. There's a bit of a delay as it waits. And now you can see slowly in, the bot is typing in and submits those credentials to the site. Hmm. Yeah. So at, at a very high level, this is essentially how easy it is to essentially build a credential stuffing attack. Now, yeah. now that we have that configuration for a site, the, the next two pieces are, well, I've got to have something to put in those values for username and password. Right, and right. You got to go steal someone's credentials somewhere. You got to have a list somewhere, right? Exactly. So this is the common term here is referred to as a combo list. 
And I've got a list here. It's actually not a real list, so nobody's passwords or anything are actually going to be tried. <laughs> it's a it's an artificially generated list with some random usernames and some random password values uh, that okay. we're going to use. Uh, but you know, if you were looking for it, you know, you can Google it. There's forums here, so we can you know see here like 150k fresh combo list for Netflix, Hulu, Minecraft, NordVPN, Disney Plus. Hmm. Um, you know, so and you know, I can go down the list. There's pages and pages, multiple different forums, multiple different sites where these things are available, essentially mm -hmm. millions of accounts that have been leaked over time that just get recycled and pulled into these types of different lists based on uh, maybe where they were from or, or the different demographics. Mm -hmm. And then the next part is, is I guess, well, you know, if you're an attacker, you probably don't want to get caught. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Just, just saying, um, you know, not, 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 uh, you know, not a lawyer. So I, I don't know, right. but that's just my guess. Um, so yeah. you're probably going to want to try and come from different IPs because if you also came from just one IP, it's easy for that security department to just go, oh, ban, ban one IP. Right. So right. what are you gonna, what are you gonna do next? So now we're gonna go to, you know, you can pay for them, but we can find different sites that will give you free proxies. So hmm. in this, this site here, Proxy Scrape. Uh, you know, it's good for uh, example, I can download a proxy list. You know, it's it's a pretty easy procedure. I copy and paste it. What I do is I go back over here. I say, I want to import this and I'm going to paste it in and I hit accept. And now all these new proxies have been added into OpenBullet. I don't mm. know if they work yet. So the next part is what OpenBullet offers is the ability to check those proxies. So I can mm. turn on a certain number of bots and essentially all they'll do is do a, a simple query and it'll start running through this list of proxies trying to validate which proxies work or not. Again, okay. this is a free list. Uh, you get what you get. So, you know, if you were paying, you know, even 10 or 15 bucks a month, you'd get a list of thousands of proxies all with, you know, better speeds, better, mm -hmm. better quality, and you'd have better choices of what regions and locations and things like that you want to come from. Yeah. Well, we won't wait even, for this. even like the, the working, like as it's, as it's chunking through, I can see there, I mean, there's a lot of no's or some yeses. So it's like you said, I mean, if you pay for the proxy list, then maybe you'll get more yeses, you'll get faster speeds. If you don't, if you just, if you do the free version, you may get a lot of stuff that just doesn't work. So exactly. So, I mean, even yeah. so I've, I've, it seems like I've got eight working ones. I'm just going to abort that. And I'm yep. just going to say delete the not working ones and delete the untested. So now I'm list, left with a list now of okay. working proxies. So now right. how do we all tie this all back in together? Well, right. we go, we create what they call a runner. So we create a new configuration. So I'm going to select one of these configs and I'm just going to, again, we're not going to do a big attack. We're just going to choose Chrome. I check okay. my proxy or my, my uh, credential list that I want to use. So I've got my config. I've got my proxy list. Uh, you know, whether I want to use proxies on or on or default or what I want to do and how yeah. many bots do I want to run? So like the more resources you have, you could be running hundreds of bots all at the same time. And then mm. it'll just, you know, grab a new credential off the list and just go through the list. So, yeah. you know, in this case here, we're, you know, if we, we hit start, uh, it'll go off, it'll, it'll, it'll initialize and it'll try and figure out, it'll, you can see it pulled out that first account. It's opening okay. up Chrome and we're going to see it you know, slowly type in the keys for yeah. that username from the account. Yeah. Pop and obviously the, obviously the slowly <laughs> typing thing, the, the part that you configured there, instead of just blatantly blasting out username and password, the typing, then that makes it look like, Hey, this is human behavior, you know? So they're trying to bypass maybe some of the bot detection stuff. Is that right? Exactly. They're, they're trying, you know, there, there are, there's, a, there's a, a wide range uh, in yeah. terms of bot detection. And we see yep. there's stuff that looks for very simple things. Uh, it might just look for a small token ID or it might look for, you know, some of these types of behaviors so they can be easily defeated. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there's the other end. There's, you know, not to toot our own horn, but, you know, F5 shape here. You know, yeah. we're essentially the gold standard when it comes to this type of stuff. So all of yeah. these types of tools, they're they're detected, no problem. They, they don't even stand a chance. Uh, right. But But there's unfortunately so many sites that don't have any protection at all, not even the basic level. So these things work fantastic. And yep. as you can see, you know, it's really a matter of a few minutes worth of effort to really build these types of things. Yeah, that's fascinating. So fascinating. that was really just the, the, the quick view of, of what, what a tool like Open Bullet is capable of and how quickly you can kind of build uh, configs and essentially launch attacks. That's awesome. So really quick on Open Bullet. I mean, I, that's that's one really powerful tool that's out there. I'm sure there's many others, that kind of thing. But when you get a hit 
Like in yep. this in this case of a credential stuffing, I can only imagine it says, "Hey, you know, <laughs> green light check or whatever." We we got a we got a live one here. Exactly. So you you can then have additional logic to say, okay, if it's successful, now take more actions. So okay. uh, and and what what's probably a good idea is maybe to switch that if all this was really too hard for for someone to muster, well, guess what? You know what? The dark web has you covered. Here's a site <laughs> called SRV11. Their credential stuffing as a service, you know, so nice. you don't even need to do any of the work. So nice. essentially, their lowest plan here, twenty bucks a month. I mean, that's dirt cheap. They'll, they'll do it all for you. Yeah, <laughs> they essentially do it all for you. You bring your combo list to the party. So if we go to a list here, like I'm, you know, going through, uh, we're just showing the first hundred entries here, but we can see hundreds of different companies that they've already built out these types of configs. They have it all in the background. And you can mm -hmm. see here, they'll say, they'll check the login and then they've got different details. So they'll get billing, they'll get orders, they'll get subscribed company, get saved sales. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll check email addresses. So essentially what these guys are doing is they'll validate that that account exists. And if there's any information that they can scrape post login, so a credit card number, an address, an email address, an account number, anything that, that could be of value, they'll pull it up and hmm. that's what you'll get as a return. So you, you, you pick your company, you say, okay, well, you know what? I, I want to go attack. We'll find somebody here. I want to go attack fun.com. That sounds like it'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, that's a fun uh, time right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give them my credential list. I can give them a proxy list. I can even give them uh, API keys uh, to, if, if the site uh, supports captchas or anything like that. And I come back a few hours later and they'll give me a list of all the accounts that were successful. And yep. then what will end up happening, here's another site called Base69. And what, you know, somebody might triage through those accounts. That I might keep some for myself. I might sell ones that don't make sense to me. So we can see right here, this is this is a site where people's credentials are essentially being stolen. We've, you know, won't try and dwell mm -hmm. too long because there are some people's, you know, credit cards and, and addresses <laughs> and date of births and things like that out here. Yeah. But, but there's there's all of these types of account. And again, they get sold for a dollar, two dollars. Um, yeah. And it's it, it's 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 a essentially a money making endeavor for many of these people. Wow, wow, it's fascinating. And I, I mean, first of all, I feel like everything is like as a service these days. You know, you can do <laughs> exactly. anything as a service. Um, so credential stuffing as a service or whatever. And I I could imagine too where like one of those sites, like you said, if maybe that maybe you don't even have to bring your own credentials that you've stolen or you bought somewhere else. You know, I'm sure someone is like, hey, just tell me what, tell me to do it, pay me money, and I'll. I'll go steal the credentials and I'll stuff the sites and then I'll let you know what happens or whatever. Right. hundred percent. So, I mean, you, you know, yeah. you can find there's all these forms like Nold is one of them. Uh, there's uh, th there's uh, what's it called? Uh, Cracked.to sinisterly where the, you mm -hmm. can find, you know, the, here's another tool, Mail Ranger Go. This one's designed for uh, attacking mail accounts. And then it mm. will, what it'll do is it'll it, you can program keywords so it'll look for Marriott, look for Home Depot, look for whatever yep. it is that you want to find, and it'll pull out uh, different accounts that are out of there. There's there's other credential yep. stuffing tools, and, and but I I think even you know this is all down the the road where you have to you know do it yourself. If you want to buy some of these accounts, a lot of this is right under your nose. Like I mean mm -hmm. you know here I'm Reddit Shopping Bay. You know we've yep. got uh, you know hundreds of different sellers who are willing to sell you. HBO Max and Disney Plus and everybody under the sun. I mean, I, yeah. I almost feel like I should get a referral ID for some of these guys right now, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, they all have their own little shops and are all selling them. Uh, you've yeah. got Discord channels where you can, you know, if I if I you know just go and search for you know accounts uh, on a on a D Discord. Uh, this is Discord. It's a Discord search. We can see a bunch of you know Discord channels that are designed for you know, selling, selling accounts or selling different market mm. information that are out there. So the stuff is not, is, you know, I wish to say that a lot of it was staying hidden, but it's really coming more and more to the forefront. It's right out there. I mean, it's just right there at your fingertips, right under your nose, no doubt. That's fascinating. It's fascinating. And, you know, I guess the, the human nature is, hey, these people, maybe they're bypassing some legal activity, some legal things, some legal boundaries, but you know, they're, they're doing, they're trying to make a buck, right. And, yeah. and just uh, doing their thing. Well, Hey, one, one other quick thing. I know we're, uh, we got probably about five or six minutes here. I wanted to talk sure. about the, uh, uh, the activity of like 
uh, bots that buy out all these like tickets for a concert <laughs> or like the the sneaker bots, you know, the new Nike Air Max, Jordan, whatever. And then boom, in two seconds, they're so. So maybe talk to us about some of that, like how that happens. And, and all that. Sure. So, I mean, as as you can imagine, like trying to break into someone's account, that's sort of more on the, I will say, the legal side. Again, not a lawyer. Right. But, you know, buying shoes is. Yeah really probably more under the, 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 you know, the okay zone, especially if you're not using a, you know, stolen credit card or a stolen account or any of those sort of things. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard for a company to get mad at you for doing what they expect buying stuff. So essentially because we have scenarios where things like Nike shoes and there may be limited supplies and the resale value is so high, we've Mm -hmm. got this whole emerging market, you know, around, you know, I'm showing a few examples here for shoes, but the same thing exists for whether it's PlayStations or GPUs. And I 100% guarantee, you know, coming into, uh, you know, our Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that the bots are going to be active trying to get those low cost TVs Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, now they don't have to even fight you in the store to, you know, get trampled. Uh, (laughs) they, they They can sit at home in their underwear and run their bots and try and get all the best deals and then just mm-hmm. resell them on the local sites. Right. So again, if I, you know, if I focus in, here's one called Nike shoe bot, uh, you know, it costs you $500 a year. So, I mean, it's no, no small potatoes in this one, uh, but essentially it's a, it's a fully automated bot sort of in the same idea as what we saw with the open, open bullet, but it's, it's focused on buying shoes. You know, they have, a ton of different features in there. You know, we see uh, even a lot of bot bypasses. So, you know, Shopify and Akamai, some of these companies that, you know, maybe aren't quite up to snuff with some of their, their bot stuff. They've mm-hmm. already built in the bot bypasses. You don't even have to worry about any of that sort of stuff because these shoe bots, you know, they, that's that's included in your $500 a year price. They, they'll mm-hmm. update it for you. You pick the shoes that you want to buy. You essentially hit go. And, uh, you know, it, it, it run, goes off and running. And, you know, as these shoes launch, it, 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 it'll purchase them for you. Wow. You get them shipped to your house. You take them, you pop them on Kijiji or whatever your favorite resale site is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in some cases we're seeing people make $100, $200, you know, premium or more on some of these shoes. So yeah. you get 10, 20, 50 shoes. You're doing all yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, first shoe, if you make a, let's say you make a hundred bucks per shoe, right? After five shoes, you've paid for the bot, right? Yeah. For the year, for the year's worth of bot. And then everything after that is just pure profit for you. And like you said, I mean, you know, not necessarily that I'm endorsing all that, but <laughs> this is a big problem like Nike. I mean, that this is a big problem for them because they want to cater to their customers. Like they're, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're kids that are in high school that want to go buy the new shoes. It's like, man, I can't do it. And that's a big problem for them. Um, but like you said, I mean, if, if someone's got the, the credit card that's, you know, if it's not stolen, then <laughs> technically they're not doing anything illegal, really. They're just, they're just grabbing stuff before the regular customer can get to it. So it's kind of a, kind of a jerk move maybe, but you know, maybe it's genius <laughs> or I don't know, whatever you exactly. want to call it. <laughs> well, and I, I think we've started to see, you know, in, in, my, in the, you know, from what I'm hearing through the retail customers we deal with is that like people like Nike do take this seriously and, you know, yeah. they don't want this scenario where it seems like these things are done. They, they do want their, you know, their, their products to be distributed fairly. But the challenge is, is that through all these different retailers, it's really hard for them to mandate some of this stuff. So it comes down to retailer by retailer. Um, but, you know, we we have heard that, you know, some of these companies are taking a harder stance for retailers that don't have things like bot protection that, you know, maybe they don't get 100 shoes, maybe they only get 10. And the, 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 mm. the retailers that are doing more to fairly distribute, you know, they'll uh, they'll able to they're they're, they're able to um, to send them more more of that yeah. stock. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, this is absolutely fascinating. And hey, I know we're coming up on our time. There was one question that just came in from our good yep. friend Aditya that said, hi, John, earlier, which I, again, we think he's talking to both of us, right? Yeah. Um, I want to pop this one up super quick because I think it's a great question. When you talk about bots and credential stuffing login, he said, hey, what if a website uses multi-factor authentication? So now yep. we're stuffing in a username and a password, but if a site has MFA, then are these bots able to get around that or maybe just talk about that for a quick second sure and the quick view is you know there's always going to be some and they're willing to say well i couldn't get that account because it had mfa or that site they'll move on to the easier ones the other scenario is there's other tools in the toolbox that we didn't get a chance to cover there's one called evil jinx where it's a man in the middle attack you know this is where we start seeing phishing proxies these these man in the middle attacks that are able to capture multi-factor authentication 
<laughs> so they get around it through that. So, yeah. you know, it's a cat and mouse game as, as, as one layer of protection get added, the bad guys get a, a little bit smarter and stronger and, you know, we, we, we got to keep at it. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, there's always job security in this world, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's there's never going to be a lack of uh, you know security problems or bad guys trying to do different things. So, oh, it's amazing. Well, good stuff. Well, hey man, we're like right at time now, John. This has been fascinating. The time always always goes by like so fast, but I'm it's super cool to see the tools and like how they're used and you know and goodness how easy they are. And sometimes just yeah. as a service, you just pay someone and they go do it all for you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but that's that's awesome, man. Well, hey, well, thanks for thanks for your expertise, your time, and uh, your willingness to you know to come on and man keep fighting the good fight out there. <laughs> thanks very much for having me. It's a, it's been a pleasure, and I, I hope people uh, at least sort of learned uh, how easy some of this stuff is, and uh, you know better ideas of how to protect themselves. Absolutely, it's been it's been very valuable. Awesome, man. Well, hey, John, have a great one. We'll talk to you later, my friend. Awesome. Thanks. All right, everybody. Well, hey, what a fascinating conversation with John Stianferrani and just the bot stuff. And I mean, that, that was just that's kind of the tip of the iceberg on what's out there and on, on how, how, you know, how people do things in the dark web. But I mean, you can start to get start to get a feel for, you know, what happens out there and how easy it is. And man, so when you see, you know, hey, so and so company had, you know, data leak or whatever, and all your credentials and, are out there. What It's just uh, I mean, this is kind of how all this stuff starts to come together in this in this deep dark world of the of the dark web. So anyway, well, hey man, this has been a phenomenal security sidebar, and I'm just um, excited to to be able to have this conversation. and And thanks for thanks for interacting with us uh, out there. As we always say, it's always fun to interact with everyone, and we encourage you to do that on on all of our live streams. Well, hey, our next show that we have coming up is uh, is this Thursday. This Thursday, we're going to talk about the OWASP top ten. Uh, like I mentioned at the very beginning with Sam uh, Stepanian. So uh, it'll be me and Jason, Jason Rom, the man, and uh, talking to Sam about OWASP Top 10. So, hey, before uh, before we kind of sign off here, I wanted to uh, to remind you, if you like these kind of live streams, then smash that subscribe button. Maybe even, maybe even uh, do a little notify so you'll know when we're coming on every day. Uh, so like... Uh, like we are doing now, we do Tuesday shows, we do Thursday shows, and uh, and that's that's every week. So uh, we're excited to be able to connect with all of you here on Dev Central. And so with that, I'll say thanks again for joining us today, and we will see you on Thursday to talk about the OWASP Top 10. Thanks, everybody. This week on Dev Central Connects, and it should have been over. Oh, 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 OWASP Top 10. Hold on, hold on. First published in 2003, the OWASP Top 10 aims to raise awareness about application security by identifying some of the most critical risks facing organizations. Historically, vulnerabilities have traded spots on the list, but for this latest OWASP Top 10 release, some substantial changes have the industry buzzing. Join Jason and John as they discuss the changes with Sam Stepanian, Application Security Architect and OWASP Chapter Lead in London. This Thursday, November 11th, 1230 Pacific. And of course, the link in the description sets your reminder. Dev Central Connects is live every Thursday, 1230 Pacific. You should have been gone. Knowing how it made them steal and you should have been